Now, anytime we talk about circular motion, we always have to ask ourselves what force acts as the centripetal force. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken a, a stopper. The stopper has a hole through it, and I've just tied a string around it. And so I can start swinging it around in a horizontal circle, like so. And we need to ask ourselves what force acts as the centripetal force. So which force makes the stopper travel in a circle? And we should be able to figure out that it's going to be the string, because ultimately if the string was cut, then the stopper would not travel in a circle. It would fly off at a tangent to the circle, a right? tangential velocity. So in this case, it would be the tension in the string would act as the centripetal force. Now, if we had a different situation where the stopper was going in a vertical circle, like so, it's, it's a similar situation, but it's a bit more complicated at the different points. So let's look at some of the different points there. Let's, let's look at a situation where, let's say it's in the bottom position, so it's at the bottom of the circle. So the centripetal force is going to be the force that points towards the center of the circle, always. That's the easiest way to identify it. Which, which force points towards the center of the circle? In this case, it would be the tensional force. However, there's also going to be a force, the gravitational force, which points away from the center. Okay? So the centripetal force is going to equal the net force on the stopper, which is going to be the tensional force minus the gravitational force. Now, if you look at the other extreme where it's on the top of the circle, so in this situation, the tension still points towards the center of the circle, so that's still going to be the centripetal force, but the gravitational force this time also points towards the center of the circle, so both forces together act as the centripetal force. So that means that we actually don't need as much tension at the top to make it go in a circle as you do at the bottom, because at the bottom, the tension has to fight against the gravitational force, but at the top, the tension and the gravitational force actually work together, so not as much tension is needed. Now on the sides, it's just the tension force, because the gravitational force is perpendicular, so it doesn't add or take away from the, the centripetal force. So that's what's going on there. So you can actually feel it when you're actually swinging it around, you can actually sort of, if you get it going, if you get it going, you can actually find that at the top, you can almost sort of let it sort of go and it just sort of, the momentum almost sort of carries it over. We don't need quite as much tension in that string to make it travel in a circle at the top as we do at the bottom. So that's the vertical circular motion. All right, so what we've got here is a motor that is powered by this power supply down here. So you can see the power supply and basically just have wound the wires up this retort stand and across. It's a bit tricky to do. You have to make sure that these metal leads don't get grounded on the retort stand or else you can short out the circuit and, and the motor won't get powered. So we've got a chain that's attached to the motor, a ball that's attached to the chain, and we can see that it's actually moving roughly in horizontal motion. It's not perfect, that it is moving vertically a little bit but it is a roughly horizontal path that it's taking. So this is a bit of a, a different situation because it's moving in a horizontal circle and the question that we always ask is what force acts as the centripetal force? Well, in this case, I'll just maybe stop this. In this case, we know that it has to do with the chain. We know that it has to do with the tension in the chain. But the issue here is that the tension is going to actually point in this direction. It's going to point along the chain. It doesn't point towards the center of the horizontal circle. So in this case here, it's actually not the entire tension. So we can actually resolve that tensional force into two components. We can resolve it into a horizontal component, that, and that is going to be actually towards the center of the circle. That's going to act as the centripetal force. So it's not going to be the entire tensional force itself, it's going to be the horizontal component of the tensional force will act as the centripetal force. Now the vertical component of the tensional force is going to be equal to the gravitational force. Because if we didn't have that, that vertical component, of course the ball would, would fall. And we can see that it, it doesn't fall. So the question we always need to ask ourselves is which force acts as the centripetal force? 
In this case, the horizontal component of the tensional force does, and the vertical component has to equal the gravitational force because the net force in the vertical direction is zero. Those forces have to be equal and opposite.